Jaya Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Vardhari Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanacha Yamuna Tira Vanacha Jaya Radha Madhava Tunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Tunjabihari Jaya Gopi Janavalava Giri Vardhari Jaya Janavalava Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Ramuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Shri Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jaya Grantaraj Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jaya Lepabhupar Ki Jaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskriptya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasa Tato Jaya Mudhirayet So, machen wir Englisch. Verstehst du Englisch? Ja? Ja? Okay, gut. Englisch ist okay? Für euch auch da hinten? Okay. Deutsch machst du? Super. Okay, so we're reading from the Nectar, uh, not Nectar, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, it's also Nectar. Uh, Nectarian Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 26, 
Fundamental Principles of Material Nature, Text 32. Please repeat. Tama Sach Cham Vikurvanat Tama Sach Cha Vikurvanat Tama Sach Cha Vikurvanat Bhagavat Viryam Choditat Bhagavad Virya Choditat Bhagavad Virya Choditat Shabdam Matram Adbhut Tasman Shabdamatram Abhut Tasman Shabdamatram Adbhut Tasman Nabham, Nabaham, Shrotram, Tu, Shabdagam, Naba Shrotram, Tu Shabdagam, Naba Shrotram, Tu Shabdagam, Tama Sach Tu Vikurvanat, Bhagavad Virya Choditat Shabdamatram Abhutasman Nava Shrutram to Shabdagam Tamasach Chabikurvanat Bhagavad Virya Choditat Shabdamatram Abhutasman Nava Srutram to Sabdagam Tama Satcha Vikur Vanat Tamasacha Vikurvanat Bhagavad Virya Choditat Shabdamatram Abhutasman Nabashratram to Shabdagam Ladies Brahma Sutta to Karvanat Bhagavad Vir Yachoditat Shabdamatram Abhutasman Navashrotram to Sabdagam Somebody else? Yep. Tamasacha Vikurvanat Bhagavad Vir Yachoditat Shabdamatram Abhutasman Naba Shrotram to Shabdagam Word by word Tas Tamasat from egoism in ignorance Cha <coughs> and Vikurvanat, undergoing transformation. Bhagavad Virya, by the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Choditat, impelled. Shabdamatram, the subtle element sound. Abhut, was manifested. Tasmat from that. Nabaha ether. Shrotram the sense of hearing. Tu then Shabdagam which catches sound. 
Translation on Purple by Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. When egoism and ignorance is agitated by the sex energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the subtle element sound is manifested, and from sound come the eternal, the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing. Once again, the translation. When egoism and ignorance is agitated by the sex energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the subtle element of sound is manifested. And from sound comes the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing. Purport. It appears from this verse that all the objects of our sense gratification are the products of egoism and ignorance. It is understood from this verse that by the agitation of the element of egoism and ignorance, the first thing produced was sound, which is the subtle form of ether. It is stated also in the Vedanta Sutra that sound is the origin of all objects of material possession and that by sound one can also dissolve this material existence. Anavritti <coughs> shabdat, which means liberation by sound. The entire material manifestation began from sound, and sound can also end material entanglement, if it has a particular potency. The particular sound capable of doing this is the transcendental vibration Hare Krishna. Our entanglement in material affairs has begun from material sound. Now we must purify that sound in spiritual understanding. There is sound in the spiritual world also. If we approach that sound, then our spiritual life begins, and the other requirements for spiritual advancement can be supplied. We have to understand very clearly that sound is the beginning of the creation of all material objects for our sense gratification. Similarly, if sound is purified, our spiritual necessities also are produced from sound. Here it is said that from sound the ether became manifested and that the air became manifested from ether. How the ethereal sky comes from sound, how the air comes from sky, and how fire comes from air will be explained later on. Sound is the cause of the sky, and sky is the cause of srotram, the ear. The ear is the first sense for receiving knowledge. One must give oral reception to any knowledge one wants to receive, either material or spiritual. Therefore, srotram is very important. The Vedic knowledge is called shruti, Knowledge has to be received by hearing. By hearing only can we have access to either material or spiritual enjoyment. In the material world, we manufacture many things for our material comfort simply by hearing. They are, all, they are already there, but just by hearing one can transform them. If we want to build a very high skyscraper, this does not mean that we have to create it. The materials, the materials for the skyscraper, wood, metal, earth, etc., are already there. But we make our intimate relationship with those already created material elements by hearing how to utilize them. Modern economic advancement for creation is also a product of hearing. And similarly, one can create a favorable field of spiritual activ activities by hearing from the right source. Arjuna was a gross material <coughs> Arjuna was a was a gross materialist in the bodily conception of life and was suffering from the bodily concept very acutely but simply by hearing Arjuna became a spiritualized Krishna conscious person hearing is very important and that hearing is produced from the sky by hearing only can we make proper use of that which already exists. The principle of hearing is properly utilized preconceived material sorry. The principle of hearing to properly to properly utilize preconceived materials is applicable to spiritual paraphernalia as well. We must hear from the proper 
spiritual source. <clears throat> Om Hagyana Timirandasya Gyanangyana Shalakaya Chakshurum Litam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shayuta Parakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitamtam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha Namo Prabhupada Priyarasaya Jagannatha Yatrananda Murtaye Bhakta Sukaya Krishna Kirtanena Nrsinghe Narakshatai Namaha Namaom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtatyade Shatarine Namo Vanchakalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayivacha Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhaktarupa Sarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Namaste Halagraha Namaste Mushalayuda Namaste Rebatikanta Namaste Bhakta Vatsala Namaste Dharanidhara Namaste Balalam Shishta Pralambari Namaste Stvi Himam Krishna Purvaja He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vando Jagatpati Gopesha Gopipakanta Radha Kanta Namastate Jayatam Surato Pangor Mamamanda Matirgati Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpadru Madha Shri Madratangara Simhasana Sto Shri Madrada Shri Lagovinda Deva Upreshtalivi Savimana Osmarami Shri Mandra Sarasaramvi Vamsivata Datastitaha Karsham Veno Svanai Gopi Rikopinata Shri Estanaha Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishavano Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradhara Shri Vasari Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Again the verse Tama Satcha Vikurvanat Bhagavad Virya Choditat Shabda Matram Adhutasman Haba Sutram Tusap Shabdagam When egoism in ignorance is agitated by the sex energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the subtle element sound is manifested. And from sound come the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing. So this is a very interesting um, part of the, maybe the, one of the most important parts of the Sankhya uh, sequence, um, because here sound is uh, the topic, Shabda. Um, and it says here that when egoism, Mahankara, in ignorance is agitated by virya, bhagavad virya choditaha. Bhagavad virya choditaha. Choditaha means impelled. So when the virya, you know the word virya? Virya is also the quality of a warrior. A warrior is virya, you know, very heroic, very powerful, very strong. So it's by the energy of the Lord that this um, agitation takes place. Um, in many ways, uh, this is uh, often, you could say, um, one of the key points to understand that actually within matter, nothing actually occurs without the um, impelling energy and power of the Supreme. So if the Supreme um, does not, or Krishna for us directly, Mahavishnu, uh, does not give his energy into material existence, actually nothing will happen. So we heard about it already before. There is the you know, original material energy, um, the Mahatattva, and before the Mahatattva is the uh, Pradhana. So this you know, original source of material reality 
uh, only becomes active by the glance of the Lord. So when the Lord looks at material energy, his looking at material energy already impregnates material energy. So one could say that material energy is like um, um, the mother. You know? Material energy is the mother. And we know in many traditions, um, the worship of the mother goddess was very common. Many traditions in Africa or in Latin America or across the world, they worship the goddess, you know, the goddess, the mother goddess. And that's, you know, worship uh, some variations of the form of Durga or Shakti. You know. So Shakti is the energy of Krishna. Krishna is Shakti Man. He's the one who possesses energy. And um, all the female manifestations like Lakshmi, um, Sita, Rukmini, Durga, you know, Radharani also, of course, she's the Adi Shakti, original Shakti. All of those energies um, are the counterpart of the Lord. And within the material uh, reality, there is Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is Purusha. And the material energy is Shakti or Prakriti. And the Lord, just by his glance, can fecundate or impregnate material energy. So um, we hear about this in the Brahma Samhita. How does it go? Angani yasya sakalendri habriti manti pasyanti panti kalayanti chiram jaganti ananda chinmaya sarujvala vigrahasya Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Angani Yasya Angani Yasya Sakalendriya Vriti Manti. <coughs> so Anga means the different um, body parts, you know, or senses, you could also say. The Angas can refer to the senses of the body, um, the Karma Indriyas. Um, so the Lord can do with all his senses the uh, work of all the other senses. So we cannot do that. <laughs> but Krishna can hear with his eyes. You know? And Krishna can also see with his ears. You know? And he can taste with his nose. And he can... everything. So with each of his senses, he can perform the activities of all other senses. You know? So um, he's not limited like we are. You know? We are very much limited in this, you could say, uh, devolution. This is a devolution. Uh, there is the evolution of Darwin, you know, the speculation of Darwin. 150 years ago, he speculated, you know, about evolution, and he created a theory that has become widely spread. But technically, what we hear in the Srimad Bhagavatam, especially in this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, in the Sankhya Yoga of Kapila Muni, is the devolution of reality. So the idea is that there is a higher original source and cause, you know, Purna. You know, we hear in the Nectar of in, no, nectar of Instruction, in the Sri Ishupanishad, in the Sri Ishupanishad there is the famous invocation verse, no? Om Purnam Madaha Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate. So this verse means that the origin is Purna, is complete. And even this original source uh, is manifesting unlimited purnas, you know, small units that are complete in themselves, still he remains balanced and does not diminish. You know? So in the material world, it doesn't work like this. You know? If there's a pot of rice, and you take rice away, then the rice becomes less. And then at one point, there is nothing left in the pot. But Krishna is Akshaya Patra. You know Akshaya Patra? Akshaya Patra is the very unique pot that Draupadi had. So she had a pot known as Akshaya Patra. And in this pot she could cook, you know. <clears throat> and then she could serve out Akshaya, unlimited, you know. Only when she ate, then there was, uh, uh, then it was over, you know. So this is the Akshaya Patra. And this was very, very practical. Who knows why? Why was it very important for Dra Draupadi to have an endless pot? 
Yes. <laughs> because she had five husbands. You know, already that is, you know, big task, you know. <laughs> Feeding five husbands. But among the five husbands, there was Bhima. You know? And Bhima is Vrikrodara, you know. He can eat like a wolf, you know. <laughs> it says, uh, Kunti used to cook, <clears throat> um, how was it? Two pots, you know. One for the family, one for Bhima. You know, <laughs> like that, you know. Maybe even more for Bhima, but I think it was something like that. So Bhima, you know, eats a lot. So when, uh, when the five Pandavas with Kunti, uh, with Draupadi, went on exile, they received this Akshaya Patra. I forgot who gave it to them. Some Rishi or demigod, I forgot. Hmm? Durvasamuni? No, no, Durvasamuni, we'll tell the story in a second. <laughs> so Durvasamuni certainly did not give the pot. Um, but uh, they, um, they had this pot and um, she would cook, you know, small amount and then she could serve from it unlimited, you know. And when everybody was satisfied and also Bhima had eaten enough, then she would eat and when she ate, then that was it for the day. Then only the next day she could, you know, again cook in the Akshaya Patra, you know. So then there's a story with Durvasa Muni. You know, Durvasa Muni. Uh, Durvasa Muni came to visit Duryodhan you know, in Hastinapur. And Duryodhana, of course, was always very envious and was trying to harm the five Pandavas. So he said, oh, thank you, a great sage, that you come to visit me. But I don't feel happy and complete if you don't visit my cousins. You know? Please also visit my cousins. You know, they are in the forest. You know, please go there and um, you know, take their hospi uh, hospitality. You know? So, of course, the plan of Duryodhana was to send Durvasa Muni with his 10,000 disciples to the forest. You know? And the five Pandavas only had the Akshaya Patra. Um, so Duryodhana said, you have to go at this specific time. You know? Because he knew at that time, Draupadi has already eaten, there is no food, there is Durvasa Muni with 10,000 disciples, how are they going to feed them? You know? So he wanted to create trouble for them. <laughs> he wanted to create trouble for, um, for the Pandavas in that way. So Durvasa Muni went to the Pandavas uh, and he arrived just at the moment when Draupadi had finished eating. You know? So the, five, the Pandavas were in great distress, especially Yudhishthir. You know? um, and if you don't know, Durvasa Muni is um, a partial incarnation um, of Shiva. You know? So he's Asutosh. What is Asutosh? Yes, Asutosh, you know, very flickering emotions, you know. So one moment, Shiva is, can be very, very, you know, very, very simple endeavor, Shiva gives blessings. You make one mistake and Shiva, chak, you know, becomes angry. <laughs> so Shiva is like that. And Durvasa Muni is specially known to have a very grumpy character, you know. Many stories, Durvasa Muni is very easily agitated, you know? So this is one of the guests where everybody starts shaking. It's like, Durvasa Muni is coming. Oh my God, oh my God, okay. Everything has to be perfect, you know? Better let's rehearse everything, otherwise we might make one mistake and then everything is ruined, you know? <laughs> he is very quick to curse, you know? And the curse of a Brahmana and a Rishi like Durvasa is very powerful, you know? Very dangerous. And also we hear, of course, in the um, sixth canto, there is a story, you know, where King Ambarish, or is it a six or eight? Eight canto, yeah. In the eighth canto of the Bhagavatam, there's a story of Ambarish, you know, very saintly king. And um, Durvasa Muni arrives and um, he goes to take a bath, you know. It's always the same story, you know. Durvasa Muni likes to, you know, test the people. <laughs> so Durvasa Muni arrives and, um, you know, we always read in the morning. Um, today is uh, Ikarashi, tomorrow is Dvadashi, and day after tomorrow we will break the fast for Ikarashi. And there is a time gap, you know. So on, on Sunday, it's I think from 5 o'clock in the morning until 10 a.m., you know, you can break the fast. But sometimes the window for breaking the fast is quite narrow, you know. Maybe only a few minutes or, a few, you know, uh, shorter. So this window, the titi to break the fast, um, 
uh, in the case of Durvasam, uh, Ambarish Maharaj was quite short. You know? So Ambarish Maharaj was fasting for a whole year. And on the day where he wanted to break his fast, Durvasa Muni comes. You know? And uh, Durvasa Muni comes and he says, okay, I'll go take a bath and then we take prasadam together. Nisingiri Bhagavan Ki Jai. So Ambarish Maharaj is like, okay. You know, so he's waiting and waiting and waiting. The Rasa Muni is taking for ages. You know, he's not coming back. So he's getting really anxious. Like, you know, the time to finish the fast is approaching. A whole year he did this fast. You know, so he asked his ministers and brahmanas, "What should I do?" You know? So they recommend him, "You drink water." You know, if you drink water, it's considered to break the fast, but it's also considered to not break the fast. So you can't do anything wrong. You know, so he drinks water. And then the Rasa Muni comes and says, you broke the fast without me, you offender. You know? <laughs> and he gets really angry. You know? And he, from one of his hairs, he manifests a big demon. You know? So that's the Rasa Muni. You have to be careful. You know? We know the rest of the story. So in this case, uh, you know, Draupadi and the Pandavas were in real anxiety. You know? They know the story also. You know? Like you know, Ambarish Maharaj was almost killed by a demon. What do we do now? You know? Um, so they said, yeah, please, you know, go take a bath and then we'll, we'll, we'll serve you all. Don't worry, you know. So the Rasa Muni goes with his disciples, you know, to take a bath. And they're like, what do we do, you know? How do you cook for 10,000 people, you know, um, straight away? And the pot was already empty, you know. So they were in great anxiety. And then what happened? Krishna came, you know. Krishna came and he took one piece of rice. You know, he took one piece of rice and he ate it. A little bit was left, you know, one piece of rice. He ate it. And then as soon as he ate it, <clears throat> because Krishna is the source, you know, Prabhupada very often says that and Krishna is the source of all living entities. He's like the root of the tree. If you want to benefit the tree, you give water and nutrients and good soil to the roots, then automatically the whole tree is served. So Krishna ate this little bit of rice and then immediately... All the 10,000 disciples of Durvasa Muni and Durvasa Muni himself, they felt so full. You know? They felt completely full. And they were like, oh my God, what do we do now? You know? If we go back now to Yudhishthir Maharaj and he's offering us a big feast and we can't eat, you know? it's very disrespectful. We can't eat anything. You know? So they escaped. <laughs> so that's Krishna. You know? Krishna is... Um, Akshaya, you know, he's unlimited in his senses, you know, his senses are related to all our senses, you know. In this section we are hearing also, we'll hear later also how different divinities, you know, different demigods are in charge for certain aspects and functions of the body. Like for example, Surya is in charge for sight, you know, Mrityu is in charge for evacuation, you know, and what else, um, I forgot the entire list. But the, all the, the, any function that is happening in this body is not happening automatically. You know? It is actually controlled by specific divinities. You know? um, so you could say our small elemental composition is directly linked with the universal elemental composition and the elemental composition of the universe has an entire set of divinities and agencies, um, demigods, you know, devatas, upadevatas, um, different you know, layers of devatas also who are managing and organizing the entire universe. So the universe is not just randomly taking place. The universe is, um, you could say, governed. You know, there is a government. You know, um, and the government also changes. You know, we hear about Indra changing. You know, and uh, each one of those divinities have a certain term of service. You know, it's just like in the current uh, governments that we have, you know, usually they're elected for five years, maybe four years, and after five years there is a reshuffle in the cabinet, you know, government cabinet, all the ministers are changed, maybe the head of state is also changed, depending, you know, sometimes the head of the government stays, but he changes ministers, you know, during one reign he might change different ministers. So in a similar way, um, Surya, you know, is the position of the sun god, but currently Vivashvan is holding that position. You know? And then after some time, there would be a different Vivashvan, you know? a different, sorry, Surya Devata, a different sun god. And it's even explained in the Bhagavatam 
that you can attain the position of the sun god. You want to become the sun god? You can do it. Somebody knows how? No. It says if you are... Huh? 300, yeah. 300 lives. If you live 300 lives in celibacy, you can become the sun god. <laughs> yes. So like that, you know, all of these positions are attainable and they are uh, taking care and managing the different functions that we are experiencing. So for us, it's a seamless, you could say, experience, but actually there's a lot of background work, you know. It's like... Um, if there's a good theater or a good presentation, you know, um, everything seems so, so easy. You watch a movie, you know, one hour, you know. But to make this movie, they might be, have been working for five years you know, or longer, you know. You know, five years of work, you just watch it in, you know, two hours. You know? So in a similar way, the experience that we have, you know, when you move your hands, you talk, you perceive, you interact with this world, everything that we experience, is happening happening perfectly, you know, without delay, you know, because there is an entire system, you know, that is controlling everything. You know? For example, for the movement of our limbs and hands, Vayu is there. You know, Vayu, the pranas in our body. You know, there are five pranas: apana, prana, apana, vyana, udhana, samana, udana. I think <coughs> the five pranas. You know, they are for balance, you know, equilibrium, you know, you know, if you turn yourself too much, you know, then you fall down. <laughs> so equilibrium, you know, balance, you know, um, extraction, impulsion, um, taking energy out, taking waste out, energy in, waste out. So all of this is done by the pranas, you know, by vayu. Um, we are not independent, you know, in our activities, you know, but it works so well that we think we are doing it, you know. It's, uh, technically, it's like a, a video game, you know. Video games, and nowadays they're very good, you know. Very good video games, you know. Very high resolution, you know. Maybe also you have VR, you know, VR uh, goggles, you know. So you are completely immersed in the experience. And any movement that you make results in a, you know, a direct action. You know? So people get lost, you know. They completely identify with this, uh, video games. Many people forget eating, you know. They are so absorbed in this reality, you know. So in a similar way, we are starving spiritually because we are so absorbed in this bodily conception of life. You know? so this bodily conception of life is so strong and is working so well, you know, it's the perfect illusion. But technically we are, it says the eyes are like the windows of this prison, you know. So we are in this prison and we're watching, you know, we're looking. <laughs> But actually, we are imprisoned, you know, in this body. So that's the whole idea of Sankhya Yoga: is actually to understand how we have become engrossed in this body. So, and specifically, most importantly, today the element of sound is mentioned. And Śrīla Prabhupāda cites this sutra from the uh, Brahma Sutras: Anavriti Shabdat, Anavriti Shabdat. Yeah. So liberation or, you know, um, uh, transcendence can be attained by sound. Yeah. And also everything is manifested from sound. So because everything is manifested from sound, everything can be uh, resurrected or transcended by sound as well. Yeah. That's the point that Prabhupada is making in the purport. So um, um, from sound comes ether and from ether comes the sense of hearing. You know? Sound you know, is the element, then comes ether, the eternal sky, and then there's the sense of hearing, namely the ears. You know? <coughs> so the ears are the key. The ears are the key to, um, Prabhupada also you know, very pragmatically says, the principle of hearing to properly utilize preconceived material materials is applicable to spiritual paraphernalia and also material paraphernalia. So if you want to do anything, you, know, you need to hear. You know, through hearing you gain understanding. By gaining understanding, you know how to utilize everything that is surrounding you. you know. So the elements that 
you could say, are subordinate to ether, you know, water, air, fire, etc. Uh, all of these elements that we can use need to be understood by ether. You know? If we have no ether, no hearing, it's very difficult, you know. There are some other ways also for people who are deaf, but of course there's a strong limitation. There are different ways of hearing, you know. Those who are deaf and blind, they can use braille, you know. It's some way of hearing also. Text is also hearing. Um, but generally speaking, if we can use our ears, you know, we can very easily, if we are very attentive, um, then we can very easily gain all kinds of different, you could say, forms of success. I'm, I was reading a book um, which was explaining um, the dynamics in groups, you know, how groups work. And they were trying to examine different groups and how they, you know, how groups are successful, groups that are weak, groups that are strong, you know. Groups. Groups of people, yes. Groups of people. And um, this was an experiment they made. They put one person into this group who used to be like uh, you could say negative influence, you know. So he was just you know very bored, not interested, you know. And in most groups, when he was there, um, the whole group, you know, became influenced by this, and then everybody became, you know, the same. Like okay, if if it's, if it's boring, then maybe we shouldn't put too much energy. And everybody became bored, and you know, the efficiency of the whole group immediately dropped, you know. But there was one group where it didn't work. You know? <laughs> And so they tried to understand why is this group is so you know strong. And the reason was because the leader of this group was very good at hearing, you know. So immediately when he heard some comment, you know, that he was, was very negative, he immediately reacted to it, but not in a way that he was you know stop it, you know. He was very empathic and encouraging, you know. So the main thing he was actually doing generally for his team, he was always hearing. You know? He was hearing so well that everybody in the group knew he understands what I want. You know? So they feel safe and they feel inspired. And then the energy levels were always increasing. Even this person was trying to sabotage. The person, the leader of this group was so good at hearing and understanding what people are doing and thinking that at one point he forgot he was supposed to be you know, the bad guy in the group for this experiment and he started cooperating as well. <laughs> so hearing you know, is very, very powerful. You know? If we hear attentively, um, very often, um, you know, we are so, you could say, overcome with different anxieties, desires, thoughts, emotions, and feelings, that it's very hard to actually be attentive and hear you know, what people are saying. You know? And hearing is much more than just um, um, only hearing the sound, you know, uh, because the sound ether is the source of all the other elements, you know. You could also say like this, through the ear, we can experience what all the other elements can experience, you know. Just by hearing a story, you can see it, you can feel it, you can smell it, you can taste it, everything. You know? The other senses don't have this capacity, but the ear has this capacity. It is the, you could say, uh, supreme amongst the senses. Um, therefore, hearing... Um, you know, if you hear properly, you will be aware of all the other um, elements. And Prabhupada also was, you know, in one section of the purport was mentioning that. You know, um, the ear is the, the the ear is the first sense for receiving knowledge. Um, that is another section. How the ethereal sky comes from sound, how the air comes from sky, how the fire comes from air, etc., etc. So from the sound and from the ear, from the subtle elements and senses, everything else is manifested. And also everything else can be manipulated and understood. So the quality of your hearing, you could also say, determines the quality of your life, you know, spiritually and materially. You know. So yes, the ear is the key. You know. The ear is the key. Um, so I'll actually stop here. We'll make it much longer. Uh, maybe there are some questions, comments. Um, Shabda. Well, there's a few here. No? Shabda gum, that which catches sound, that's the ear. You know? So the ear here is the sound catcher. The sound catcher is an interesting word for the ear. Shabda gum.
sound catcher. Um, then we have Shrotram, the sense of hearing. Um, and then we have um, Shabda Matram. Matra is the element, the element of hearing. The element of sound, sorry. Okay. Yep. Subal Gopal. Thank you for a nice lecture, uh, Prabhu. I would like to ask, you talked about that uh, our body functions are also controlled by divinities. Um, for devotees, is it that the uh, super soul takes charge of that, or is it still that we are, we are controlled by the demigods? The demigods cannot, can't do anything without Krishna. So anything they're doing, they're doing through the blessing of Krishna. And Prabhupada also explains it very often that and this is especially true in Bengal, in the area where Prabhupada also grew up, in, in Bengal, Calcutta. Um, in this area, because there were so many Islamic invasions and they destroyed all the temples, um, the main worship of the Brahmins became the worship of the Shalagram Shila. So in, any, in, in, in Bengal, in any ceremony for any divinity, any demigod, it's Durga Puja or Shiva Puja, there is always the Shalagram Shila there. Without the Shalagram Shila, without the presence of Vishnu, nothing happens. So Prabhupada uses this as an example that um, generally in the Vedic culture, this is, even it might not be obvious at the first sight, no, you, you go to a big, you know, in Calcutta is very famous for Durga Puja. You know? Every year the whole city is full of pandals. You know? They build entire temples every year, completely new pandal, like big tents and very artistic, very beautiful for Durga, you know. So you think it's just Durga Puja, but actually there is a Shalagram Shila somewhere there as well. <laughs> so without the presence of Krishna, the demigods can't do anything. And um, um, but Krishna, Krishna does not uh, uh, does not need to directly uh, interact. You know, he doesn't need to, but of course he can, and very often he does. You know? And there's this very famous story that um, I forgot which sadhu it was, but there's this very famous story about uh, this devotee who was reading the Bhagavad Gita, and the Bhagavad Gita it says, you know, I personally provide what they uh, lack, you know, and sustain what they have. You know, so he thought maybe not personally, you know, maybe Krishna will do it through his energies, through the demigods, you know. <coughs> And uh, um, so he corrected it, you know. He scratched it and he corrected it, you know. <laughs> so then he went to take a bath, and then in the meantime, um, you know, it says two boys came, you know, Krishna and Balaram, and they were they had the scratches on the back, you know, and they were telling the wife of the Brahmana, "Your husband is very cruel, you know. He was he was harming us." You know? <laughs> He was forcing us to bring all of these supplies, you know. So they brought all of these supplies, you know, all kinds of different, you know, things that a brahmana might need. You know? And then they left. You know? um, so when the when the husband came back, he was, you know, shocked, you know, to realize that actually Krishna had personally, you know, brought everything he needed. So in that case, Krishna was proving that actually uh, it is really like that. Krishna is personally taking care of the devotees. So, yes, you can certainly say that Krishna is directly taking care because he's anyway the source of the power of the demigods. So, for a devotee, it's even said, um, um, a devotee does not see the super soul in the heart. You know? He sees Shyama Sundara. Tremanjana Trita Bhakti Vilochane na Jam Shyama Sundaram. So, a, a, a devotee sees the Shyama Sundara directly in the heart, not the super soul. Okay, astronomers? Oh, yeah. um, and in the purport it is said that if sound is purified, our spiritual necessities also are produced from sound. Sorry, maybe it's better to begin from the beginning. We have to understand very clearly that sound is the beginning of the creation of all the material objects 
for our sense gratification. Similarly, if sound is purified, our spiritual necessities also produced are also produced from sound. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about this? Like, how can these spiritual necessities produced? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, sound is the key. The point is that sound is the key. Sound is the sound is the subtle element that manifests all the material elements. So all our sense objects and senses to perceive and enjoy sense objects come from sound. So if we have our sound, you know, if we can hear properly and understand properly, then we can, you know, deal in this world in a much more, you could say, um, effective, you know, savvy way, we will be more successful. And um, in a similar way, sound is also the connected to the subtle reality, you know. So if you hear um, a song that is very, very sad, you know, you become sad. If you hear a song that is very, you know, aggressive, you might become angry, you know. You hear a speech, you know, uh, agitators, you know. There's always some agitators, you know. And they're telling, you know, the government is doing this wrong and this wrong and this wrong and this wrong, you know. We should make revolution, you know. And if enough people hear it, you know, and they become inspired, then they make a revolution, you know? <laughs> become aggressive, you know. So, and also if it's spiritual sound, you know, Prabhupada also talks about it in the purport, that the quality, of course, of the sound, the mantra, you know, the Hare Krishna mantra, the particular sound capable um, of doing this, you know, to free from entanglement, is the transcendental sound vibration Hare Krishna. So spiritual sound connects us with the spiritual reality. It purifies the mind and Prabhupada very often says that it's, it's very simple. Even a child can do it. Even an animal can take advantage of the sound vibration of Hare Krishna Mantra. Why? Because it goes past the sensual, mental and intellectual layers and directly attaches to the soul. So therefore... So spiritual sound vibration manifests uh, the entire material reality. You know? So um, all our necessities, you know, um, yeah, spiritual necessities. Because Krishna, because the thing is, um, material necessities, you could say in one way, are um, uh, a misconception. You know? We don't really need, you know, material possessions you know, the way we think we need them, you know. If you have a body and you're attached to this body, and you have a certain, you could say, requirements, you know, to, you know, live in this world, you know, it's obvious. But many yogis show that actually, if you have proper understanding, you don't really require material objects. You know? So that you could say the only necessity, like Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj used to say, there is no lack in this world, you know, the only lack is Krishna consciousness. So we are lacking, that's what we are lacking, the connection with Krishna. If we are self-realized and are in connection with Krishna, all our spiritual necessities are granted, you know, naturally. You know. The spiritual soul is technically not dependent on food, you know, you know, and the house, and, you know. That's not what the soul needs. The soul needs uh, to reconnect with Krishna, you know. Like the example of the fish, you know, you can give the fish anything you want, you know, you know, a new iPhone, you know, but the fish only needs water. You know? So if we are in the water, if we are in Krishna consciousness, we're happy. All our necessities are taken care for. That's at least how I understand it. Okay, Grantarat Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shlavrabhupada ki jai.